I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> guys we're still in Karakol but right outside of the center in the national park actually and the goal is to go to Alakul Lake so we're starting right here at the second bridge the taxi brought me here for 800 some uh, the entrance to the park is 250 some and uh, today will be a pretty easy day of hiking I will make my way to the second yurt camp it's called camp 2 and uh, I will stay there for 2,500 some a night, which is pretty expensive if I compare to some cool actually. But uh, it's harder to get products there, so I guess, and it's a bit more touristy as well. So I guess that's the reason. Uh, and after that, day two will be the hardest. That's when we will make our way across the Alakol Pass and we'll see the beautiful turquoise colored lake. Uh, and then we will sleep in Altin Arasham, uh, where there are some hot springs. I'm really looking forward to that. And after that we will hike again, but it's all downward, so pretty easy again, to Aksu. And from there I will take a bus back to Karakol. So three days of hiking, let's go. absolutely gorgeous here it's like they call Kyrgyzstan the Switzerland of Central Asia and when you walk right here you realize why they say that uh, when I did some cool trek I was like not super impressed I mean it's beautiful but it's this is like on another level beautiful so cool is more like on the steppe like open fields very dry not so much green but here you have like trees uh, it's, it's gorgeous it's really gorgeous here Pretty much the whole time already we were walking right next to the Karakol river and I, here I have like a close view I will show you uh, so you can imagine how powerful this river really is and I think I'm in a pee pee spot right here <laughs> let me show you anyway but let's see the river You can imagine if you fall in there, I think you're done, you know, there's no escape, there's no escaping from that, that powerful water stream, I don't think so, it's crazy. What a monster truck! If I ever buy a van, it has to be one like that, you know. You can go anywhere and it's big enough to sleep in, to live in. That's the real van life. At a distance of around 8 to 9 kilometers, starting from the bridge where the taxi dro dropped me off, uh, there's a beautiful valley. I mean, this is definitely the highlight so far. I'm sure there will be other places even more beautiful. But this is where the river meanders through the valley and it becomes super wide uh, also the hiking is pretty flat here which is nice as well of course and uh, it's a beautiful spot to have some lunch you can refill your water here uh. I was waiting in the undertow Set adrift with feather-weight light bulbs Unaware of where my heart would flow I was waiting in the 
seems that we have made it to some kind of campsite you can buy some drinks here some food some drinks it's right next to the first bridge that you need to cross hello salam <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's really I didn't know about this you can refill your stuff here you can buy drinks and food here I'm not sure if this is camp number one there are some people camping there Not sure. Is this uh, camp number one? Camp? camp number one, this one? No. It's camp. Ah, camp number one. Because I'm going to camp number two. It's uh, more further, eh? It's Sirata, Alakul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alakul. Al Alakul. Go over the bridge yes, yes. and then continue. This is a bit sketchy. Very shaky the bridge. So I just met uh, this local legend here, Bayaman. Uh, he's also hiking alone here. No backpack, no water. <laughs> so I gave him some water. But uh, we're going to the same place to Yurt Camp uh, number two. It's called si Sirota. Yeah. Sirota, it's called, right? Yeah. And uh, he's actually from Aksu. You're... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to his uh, village later on in two days. <laughs> so let's uh, continue because uh, the last climb to Camp two is uh, pretty steep. Right? Sauna and food, bar, 150 meters. That seems weird. A sauna and food here. I could use a sauna right now, <laughs> but uh, I guess that's a joke or something. And a bar, 150 meters. Maybe we're at almost at camp two and there's a sauna there? I don't know. Let's go and find out, I guess. So we made it to the camp. Uh, and I need to be in Camp Sirota. I think there are multiple camps here. Whoa. That was thunder. But it doesn't look that dark yet. So there's one camp here. And then there's another right there, I think. And maybe there are even more camps. Let's see. Hello, salam. This is uh, Sirota? Yes. Ah, okay, okay, then I need to be here. So this will be my tent for the night. It's a two-person tent, but so far I'm alone. And he said, maybe there will be a girl coming. And he was laughing, <laughs> so I don't know what he... But there are many tents here, so probably I will sleep alone here. Which is okay for me. All right, it's pretty hot though. Maybe I will go for a little dip in the river to refresh a bit. Hi. How are you? Good, and you? 
<coughs> you made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the last part was a bit steeper. Eh? Yes, a bit. A bit. Wait until tomorrow. Yeah. It will be worse. <laughs> All right, the dinner is served. Let's see what is on the menu today. It's a bit of a different situation here than at Songkul. It's more like touristy. It's not really like a homestay. It's like 100% tourists here. And just one couple, I think. Maybe they have some kids that are preparing all the food here. Also, the price is much higher. It's like more than double, 2,500 for a night in a tent. Dinner and breakfast included. And that's the restaurant right there. I think she's cooking here. Restaurant there. So uh, on the menu today, we have some cucumbers and tomato salad. And then we have a soup, potatoes, carrots, onions. Mm, not sure what the rest is. Some pieces of sausage, I guess. <laughs> Not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me try it. Super hot. <laughs> <laughs> but good. Actually very good. Top service. So if you want to know how it goes down at the yurt camp, we start with beer, then we go to cognac. With, uh, we have Germans here. Uh, Israel, right? And Israel. Yeah. Multicultural. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was it again? Nastorovia. No, no, no. I ah. forgot. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, it's very very mild. Mild. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, so, I feel so weak now. <laughs> All right, guys, it's 8.30 and I think it's time to sleep. There's uh, really not much to do here in the evening. And I will try to get an early start tomorrow. I will try, I said. I'm not 100% sure yet. But uh, let's see. Tomorrow is another day of hiking to Alaku Lake. And tomorrow we will actually see the lake, which I'm very excited about. But it's also the heaviest trekking day tomorrow, which I'm not so excited about. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, bye. All right, we're off for another start. Day two of the trek to the Alakul Lake. Um, it's uh, about seven o'clock now, 7.15. So uh, we have about 1,000 meters of incline ahead of us, but uh, in a sh very short distance, which means it will be like super steep. I'm just going to take it super slow and see if I manage to do it, I'm pretty sure I will manage to do it, but tonight I will be broken, that's for sure. Actually, I'm already a bit broken now. <laughs> Let's go. And that's where we're going now. Is it that way or here? Huh? You're going to swim? <laughs> See you later. <laughs>
All right, two hours and a half, 600 meters of incline. We made it to the Alakul Lake and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I was waiting in the undertow Set a drift with fed away like bones Unaware of where my heart would flow I was waiting in the undertow After chilling out at the lake for a bit, we're continuing the way to the Alakul Pass, which is another 400 meter of elevation gain. It's quite steep, maybe even steeper than the previous section, but uh, I'm ready for it. So, yeah. so currently we are at 3,700 meters, and we have about 200 meters of incline left to reach the highest peak of this trek. You can see it right there. You see these people, there, there you see more people. And that's the point we need to reach. And the view from here is absolutely spectacular. We made it. 3,900 meters above sea level and it's super windy here we have the flag here so I made it 3,900 meters above sea level it was tough but uh, not the toughest hike I ever did uh, but it's pretty tough though and it's a bit sketchy here can you see behind me the lake? Holy fuck. This is sketchy as fuck. Whoa. Lots of wind here. <laughs> but now the next uh, mission is to get down again. Which will be a bit tricky as well because it will be slippery. It's very technical. Um, yeah, so I'll go for it. I think we have about 1,500 meters to go down or something. Say hi to uh, YouTube. Hello. <laughs> My new Kyrgyz and Russian friends. What's your name actually? Hmm? Your name? Jenya. Jenya and Igor. <laughs> <sighs> Honestly. It's not the going up that was hard, it's the going down. It's super sketchy, I can tell you. Now I realize why everybody talks about the hiking poles. It's really necessary. <laughs> Fucking hell. Sketchy as a fog. So I made it safe and sound over the Alakul Pass. Uh, getting up there was actually not that hard. It was steep, but okay-ish. <laughs> but uh, getting down, that was the real challenge. I'm wondering why nobody mentions this, because this is like really adventurous hiking, you know? This is not even hiking. It's like skiing on uh, dirt. <laughs> So now that we're closer to the river again, I think I will uh, refresh myself a bit, dip my toes in and uh, wash myself a bit, you know, after all the dust that is on me from uh, descending there, I definitely need it.
super cold, but it feels good. Oh, fucking cold, damn. Alright, so I found a guest house. Uh, the guest house Elsa was actually uh, almost fully booked. They only had one yurt available and it was 3,000 uh, SOM and there was nothing else included. It was like, what? That's super expensive. So uh, I came to the guest house across Elsa and here they have like a kind of VIP room they call it. It's with three beds. So one, two, three. And there's a bathroom. But uh, no shower, only like a, a lavabo. But uh, I paid 2100 uh, for one night with breakfast and dinner included. But the thing is, if somebody else shows up, they might put them here as well. So this is not a private room, you know. So it's two All right, we're off to the last day of the trek to Alakul. Today we're going to Aksu, and I'm not going alone today. There are some uh, Frenchies here. <laughs> uh, but first we might make a stop at the hot springs. I hope so. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so this is supposed to be the hot spring. Ah, c'est pas trop chaud. Yeah, it's definitely a hot spring, but uh, I think we cannot uh, bathe in here. <laughs> ah, yeah. But il y a encore un autre. Plus grand, je pense. Là-bas, un peu plus loin. Alright, so it seems that we have found the other hot spring, but it's really just a spring and not really a reservoir where you can bathe in. But let's have a look anyway. And the river is right next to it, so you definitely need to be careful. Oh yeah, here. This is the other hot spring. But the water is not super hot, I would say like, let's say, maybe 30 degrees, 30. Yeah, and it smells a bit like sulfur. It's not really hot actually, it's like just perfect. <sighs> <laughs> But it stinks a bit. Chilling in a hot tub next to the river. Why not? Right, so the hot springs, uh, it was worth it after all. Uh, it's not super hot and the hotels it's a bit hotter, but here it's okay as well. And I'm here chilling with my friends, uh, Daniel and uh, what's your name? Adel. Ata. Adel. Adel. Ah, team, team, team. Uh, team, team. And he's smoking something weird, I don't know, it's like not even tobacco, it's something brownish. And he asked if I want to join. I'm not really sure what it is actually. So the expectations for the hot springs were a bit higher. But still it was worth uh, a 2 kilometer detour. 
and we met some uh, people from Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan so it's kind of nice but now we're off to Aksu <sighs> After hiking about 19 kilometers, we arrived in Aksu and uh, the next mission now is to get transportation to Karakol. Uh, it could be a shared taxi, a taxi or a mashrutka. We'll see. But uh, I walked enough for uh, a while now. <laughs> After three days of walking, it's enough. I need a beer and a pizza. All right, this is the end of the Alakul trek. We are in Aksu waiting for the Mashrutka or a taxi, I don't know yet. But uh, we don't have a beer to celebrate. It's uh, Sprite instead. <laughs> what do you have, like uh, iced tea or something? Yeah, but it's free, it's, uh, it's not free, it's fresh. That's important. <laughs> not free, not free. <laughs> I made it back to Karakol, finally. I have about 10 minutes to walk to my hotel. Uh, I took a mashrutka for 25 som. Uh, and overall the trail was really nice. I absolutely loved it. I was almost not going to do it, but I'm glad I did. Because it's the most beautiful uh, part of uh, Kyrgyzstan that I saw so far. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. You have a little bit of everything. Valleys, beautiful glacial lakes. Uh, and it's pretty hard as well. Don't underestimate this track for sure. Because it's pretty hard. See you in the next video. I was waiting in the undertow. Set adrift with feather wind like bows. Unaware of where my heart.